I'm Alex, and this is a Genelec 8000 series speaker. Now, Genelec have been making speakers in Finland since 1978. Uh, they're a Finnish company, they've been doing it for over 30 years, uh, and the 8000 range has been out for a little while now. But we kind of want to just go back and look at what makes a good monitor, um, why a monitor is a good investment, and why the 8000 range, we think, are very good monitors. So, um, why should you spend some money on a monitor? Well, obviously, a monitor is the only thing in your studio that actually makes any sound. Um, and it has the power to influence your music, and um, probably more than any other piece of equipment you buy. Because every decision you make, obviously from the creation of uh, sounds, like if you're messing around with sounds, if you're miking up a guitar cab, uh, and obviously if you're mixing, you need monitors to actually show you what's going on. You need to be able to hear uh, the qualities of your music, and that allows you to make good decisions, um, and ultimately, hopefully, make better sounding music. So what qualities are we looking for in a good monitor? Now, obviously, part of what a monitor does is just represent sound through the full frequency range, you know, from very low sounds uh, to very high sort of tweeting bird type sounds. Well, obviously that's important, but what we want to be sure is that the response during that range is totally flat. We want to make sure that the speaker isn't accentuating certain frequencies, because if it is, obviously that's going to affect your decision as to whether you think something sounds right. If it's lifted in the high, it's going to be like, oh, that sounds fine. Um, but obviously, you may come to play your mix on another system and find actually the high is deficient. Um, the other one is obviously if, if the speaker is actually representing too much bass, you could be playing your mix somewhere else and you'll actually realise there's not as much bass as you thought. Um, so we want a monitor that's flat. The other thing is three-dimensionality and a sense of the sound stage. And now what I mean by that is um, a sense that all of the instruments are clearly defined, uh, that you can hear enough detail to hear the texture of violins or of, uh, of synths or of drums, you can hear the punch of the drums, and that when you sit and listen in the ideal position, everything is laid out properly. You want that feeling that all of the, the elements of the music are in their proper place, and you can tell for dead sure that the vocal is right in the center and that that symbol is very slightly off to the right. You should be able to hear that separation, so that's a quality that you want to listen for. The other killer thing is your room and how the monitor adapts to the, the sound of your room. So, uh, you know, the monitor and the room is a marriage, basically. You know, we don't listen to music in an anechoic chamber where there are no reflections at all. You know, we're listening uh, to music maybe sometimes in, in terribly sort of inefficient places like, you know, a bedroom that's been appropriated for music or, a, you know, a little cubby hole in the house because that's all we've got access to. Well, you know, that's going to affect the sound. And there's, um, one of the things that Genelec make um, you know, a big deal of is educating people in terms of what you can do to get the absolute best from your monitor. And there's some stuff that we're going to look at on these particular monitors which will help you do that. Corrections you can make. Uh, also, Genelec put out a lot of information about where to put them in the room. And, and of course, the biggest thing here is acoustic um, treatment. You should probably consider some kind of acoustic treatment to, to counteract some of the, the major problems that you'll get. Um, in real world spaces. So let's have a look at these monitors and let's see how these monitors hopefully exemplify good monitor design. So obviously the question is, you know, how does the Genelec 8000 series exemplify those qualities? Well, uh, I guess the first one is obviously the most obvious thing. And why does it look like this? You know, why has it got this kind of curved surface? You know, what's going on? Well, Basically, that's called the minimum diffraction enclosure. Um, diffraction, and obviously having a minimum of it, is uh, diffraction is a very uh, undesirable quality in a monitor. What it is, is where, where you would have monitors that have very squared off edges, those edges themselves act kind of like the tweeter. Um, basically, sound will approach the edge and, and disperse into the room, and, and obviously going in all kinds of different directions, which is extremely undesirable. And the effect that that has when you're listening to the music is this kind of clouding of the stereo image. It becomes difficult to perceive where things are supposed to be um, and also because you're getting all of these sounds firing off in random different directions it creates comb filtering uh, and it affects the frequency response. So it means that you don't end up with a flat frequency response and your room is having all kinds of strange unpredictable effects on the sound. So very bad thing to have in a speaker. Now 
NDE basically eliminates that. There are no hard edges on the speaker, um, and there's also no parallel surfaces, and this is all part of that. Um, it's a very distortion-free design. The other thing is called the Directivity Control Waveguide, which is Genelec's term for this space around the tweeters. Now, um, this exit port has an effect of basically allowing the speaker to be very forgiving if you're off axis. And what that means is if you're not exactly in the sweet spot, uh, that is that you're not in the sort of the edge of a, uh, the corner of an equilateral triangle with your speakers at the other side and you uh, sat in the middle, you know, between the two, you'll actually be able to be quite far off axis with a Genelec speaker and you still get a very realistic representation with most of the frequencies preserved. With some speakers you have to be dead centre and that's not the case with an 8000 series speaker, they're extremely forgiving. So, you know, if, you're, if you are working on a very large mixer, for example, and you're very slightly off axis because you're adjusting something that's off to the side, you can make the correct mix decision without needing to be dead in the, in the sweet spot. They're very forgiving in that regard. The body of the speaker is made of aluminium uh, and not plastic or MDF. It may look like plastic on camera, but I can tell you for a fact it's aluminium. In fact, we have a kind of partially built Genelec here, uh, very partially built. Um, and yeah, it's made of aluminium uh, and aluminium has a, a sort of number of qualities which are desirable when, you, when you're making speakers. It's obviously, it's very rigid, stiff. Um, you know, traditionally, um, loudspeakers would be made from MDF uh, and MDF has to be made thicker, basically, you know. So, uh, this is actually only four millimetres thick uh, and you'd have to sort of use 18 millimetre MDF. That's sort of the traditional thing to use. Now, um, it being four millimetres thick means that you can make the speaker quite significantly smaller while still having really good bass response. So this is another thing to be aware of with Genelec is certainly with things like the 8020, you will be amazed by the bass response of those speakers and it actually may be all you need. Um, we get a lot of sound out of a small cabinet and part of the reason is the materials used to build it. One of the other things is that the 8000 range is active. Actually, Genelec were pioneers of active speaker design. You know, that means that there are amps inside the speakers, they're powered. Uh, you don't need to buy a separate amp for them like you would with passive models. Um, but that actually means that you can really improve the response of things. It means that obviously the, there are two amps in here. This is a bi-amplified speaker. There's one driving the tweeter and one driving the woofer. Um, and those amps are chosen specifically for these woofers and these tweeters. You know, they are matched in terms of response, so we know that the performance is absolutely as best it can be. Um, the other thing with it being an active design is there's a crossover inside, and the crossover is the there's a circuit which basically sends part of the sound to the tweeter, because that needs to be the high frequency sound, it gets sent off to the tweeter, and the low frequency sound gets sent off to the low, uh, to the woofer. Um, that's active as well, and, and the benefit of that is an extremely low distortion. Uh, in passive models, you are sending large volumes, a large sort of uh, uh, wattages, basically, of, of sound through, um, through the passive design. It ends up causing distortion. That doesn't happen because actually it's at a very low level that the active uh, crossover is acting. So um, it again means very low distortion. Inside every 8000 series speaker is active protection circuitry and you don't really need to think about that tremendously but it's, it's good to know it's there. What that means is that you can be sending extremely sort of errant low and high frequency sounds through these and obviously uh, wonderfully large volumes. Uh, if you basically plugged in a cable or something like that on another speaker it might cause damage. These are very very well protected so they're extremely reliable and I guess in practical terms that just means that if you've invested in a speaker your tools, your the things you're using to do your your work you can rely on will work and not break obviously you know the night before you need to deliver some incredibly important piece of music so around the back of the speaker you'll see there's a bass reflex port that's the thing here so the bass reflex port is the exit for a very long and efficient tube system that runs along the inside of the um, speaker. It's airflow optimized, it doesn't have any kind of hard edges which could cause the air to not escape efficiently and affect the timing uh, and quality of the bass response. Um, this design is very, very effective and in practical terms it means that um, even on the very small Genelex, they have amazingly generous bass response. Um, you know, it partly comes from the size of the cabinet internally because it's using aluminium. Another thing is this bass reflex port, and it works very well. 
So the other um, useful feature in terms of getting these things set up in a room are these little feet on the bottom. Uh, this is called an isopod. Um, and basically the isopod is just a rubber stand, um, but that allows the speaker to be acoustically and mechanically decoupled from um, the environment it's in. So what this means in practical terms is if we've got it on a table or if we've got it on a, uh, a speaker stand or maybe up on a shelf, um, it stops the speaker from transferring vibrations into the shelf itself. And, and if that happened, what would happen is the shelf itself would start to vibrate, to radiate sound, um, which is a very undesirable thing to happen. The isopod's there to stop that from happening. The other very cool benefit is that it allows you to tilt the speaker. You see that you can tilt it forward and back. So you can basically get the speaker set up. If it's very slightly high, you can tilt it down um, so it's pointing right at your face, your ears, uh, where it needs to be. So it's a very useful thing for getting them set up exactly right. Now the other thing is around the back. Um, I was talking before about um, kind of real world um, acoustic situations, as in having your speaker in a room, uh, and, and can your speaker correct you know, and, and adapt to that? And actually all of the Genelec series speakers have controls. You can kind of see just in here, these are very sort of straightforward real world controls designed to deal with the kinds of primary, you know, kinds of major issues that we have in speakers. So there are um, quite sort of detailed levels of adaptation for bass tilt. That means that if you've got your speaker within a certain distance from the back wall, you may need to drop the bass slightly because it will be artificially amplified. Even more so if it's in the corner of a room, you really do need to drop the bass in that case because it will, um, the corner will very, you know, extremely amplify it. And that's actually, again, for reasons we discussed before, it's undesirable because if you're perceiving loads of bass and it's because your room is in the, your speaker is in the corner of the room, your mix is going to be delivered bass light because you're going to think that it's there because you heard it. But actually when you play it on other systems that are not where it's not in the corner of the room, that bass isn't being artificially amplified. So it's very, very important that you engage these controls. Uh, and Genelec put a lot of uh, um, effort into ensuring that they're obviously real world and they also have a lot of effort into providing documentation. So there is uh, a PDF on the website, uh, which actually is the setup guide. I have a printed version here. Um, and this is designed to help you set your monitors up in space. Uh, it's actually really good information, even if you don't I happen to have a Genelec speaker. I definitely recommend checking it out. Um, it's very, very useful, and obviously the key thing is just making sure that you're getting the best from them, so do do that. Uh, but on the back of the speaker, the controls are there to help you do it. Um, also, we've just got connections. Uh, there's XLR connections on these 8000 series. This is the 8030, uh, and then power, uh, which is very useful, you need power. Uh, and also there's, uh, we have mounting brackets so that you can mount it on wall. Uh, there is also um, mounting systems. There's a um, microphone pole uh, socket in the bottom uh, and the isopods uh, can also be mounted on speakers. So that's the 8000 range. There's a lot of different technologies there, um, but the effect of them all together is a speaker that is exceptionally flat in terms of frequency response. But if you're not in the perfect room, the speaker is very forgiving. So it will um, be very forgiving if you're off axis, so you can still make good mix decisions if you're not in the dead center of the, um, you know, of the equilateral triangle. There are real world response controls on the back so that you can correct for the kinds of problems that you will find when you're setting these up in a room. Uh, you have the isopod so you can tilt and adjust the speaker, get it just right, and stop space from being transferred into the, uh, into the surrounding environment. And then obviously the design of this cabin is, is designed to give you the purest form of sound. There's a minimum diffraction enclosure, so you're getting a very good detailed stereo image without distortion, and then you've got your directivity control waveguide, uh, again, ensuring a flat re frequency response and ensuring that the sound stage is properly presented. They're very, very good speakers, and they're very reliable as well. Um, there is a warranty extension for two extra years, which you can get by just registering the speakers when you get them online. Um, and, you know, and Genelec uh, in Finland, there, it's not an unusual thing to have 25-year-old speakers back for service and repair in the factory. That actually happens. They are designed to last for many, many years. Um, so I urge you to try one out. Um, they're definitely an investment, um, but it's probably the most sensible thing that you can spend money on in your studio. Remember, this is the actual only thing that's going to make sound, and it's going to affect everything that you do in a positive way. So you can make the right mix decisions, get the mics in the right place when you're setting up cabinets, things like that. Everything you do will sound better with decent monitors. So definitely worth a look. And uh, yeah, you can try these in, in DV stores all around the country. 
give the store a call, uh, come check them out and hope you like them. Thanks very much.